Joel Barkin <laughs> is right now the VS, uh, VP, I don't want to say like right now. Uh, who knows? It could be more. The VP of communications for Oneida Indian Nation. And Joel is kindly on the air with us here this morning. Good morning, sir. Morning to both of you. And thanks for uh, waiting. We had the congressman in who it's the first time he's really spoken out since since uh, leaving office um, back uh, in November, or I guess leaving office at the end of the year. So your thoughts on everything that's going on, I, I really wanted you to come on and talk about this potential investment in uh, in Utica. Let's start with that. Uh, the casino sure, and, downtown and before and, I even start there, I just uh, want to wish you and, and all your listeners a happy Memorial Day. Um, you know, this is a, for the Oneida Nation, a, a very special holiday, and I think not everyone recognizes or, or knows this, but there has been an Oneida member that has fought in every American conflict since the founding of this country. And is a uh, holiday that is deeply personal and deeply meaningful to the Oneida people. So I wanted to just start there, if that was okay. As, uh, uh, as Ray Halberter says, um, they're, uh, they, uh, the Oneidas, our first ally, um, the America's well, what, first ally. That's right, yeah. fought alongside uh, George Washington and, and his men in the founding of this country. So uh, in terms of your question on the Utica Casino, you know, what what the nation has said is that the, the county executive has, has outlined a, a very bold vision to revitalize downtown Utica, and, and we are pleased to be among the stakeholders that are partnering in this effort. Uh, and if it is to go forward. Uh, the nation is committed to being a partner and investing fifty million dollars in this project. So uh, we are uh, deeply committed and, and think that the county executive's vision here is right. And I think you know, the nation now has twenty plus years in the tourism industry. And the one thing about tourism that I think, from our experience, that you know, Ray Halberter and, and nation leadership has constantly tried to make clear is that you know, it is an evolving industry. If you are not constantly making changes and upgrading and offering new types of opportunity, services, etc., uh, you will be passed. And I think what the what the county executive is is saying here is that we need to be bold. We need to re reinvent and rethink about how we present downtown Utica and this is a you know this is the way to do it for the future what is the uh, what's the general thought of the of the governor really pushing to add these casinos peppering them really all all across the state what what's the the general position of the United Nation well you know I think we've made clear that uh, we have obviously nothing no problem with gaming as economic development in fact I think the nation has created the model and how you do it the right way. The problem becomes when you start interfering with existing economic models. And there is a, uh, a finite amount of economic development that can come. It's not never-ending. Yeah. Uh, I think one thing with the nation that sort of we separate it ourselves from other commercial gaming enterprises that it think is important to note is, you know, the nation doesn't have shareholders, you know, across the globe that it's sending all of its revenues to. Uh, Central New York is the nation's home, has been since time immemorial, and will always be. It's a captive industry in the same way Niagara Falls or the Statue of Liberty or anything else. It is yeah. a, you know, entity that will never leave. So by definition, the nation's revenues are going right back into the ground. It, it, it is not an accident that you see, you know, the sprawling campus of Turning Stone, the uh, our new Maple Leaf Market, Savon, um, Yellow Bick Road, all being within the same central New York location because uh, that is where uh, the nation's homeland is yeah. and forever will be. And it's not good. We're not going to start investing in building properties in Georgia just because uh, they might be more financially advantageous. How, how do you? Uh, it, it seems that we've gone from you know the deal that was cut between the uh, the state, the county, and the Uniteds uh, now has a, a revenue sharing when it comes to uh, to the slots, and that will continue for as long as we all continue. 
Um, right. There seems to be an improvement, would you say, that once we get this behind us, you can now move forward to try to promote the area, which is really what the county executive really is trying to push right now. Yeah, and I think any objective look at the uh, post-settlement it can only lead to, you know, you coming to the conclusion that it has been a net positive for the region. And, you know, one of the things the nation had said for many, many years leading up to the settlement was that we were just caught in such negativity and that if we could align stakeholders, bring people together, and that's really what Tony Vicente was saying, we saw Madison County come to the table, the governor, that we could work together and put forward a positive economic vision rather than having to constantly stay in this back and forth uh, fight of you know, who was right, who was wrong. And we've, so we've moved past that. We've seen you know, ten, tens and tens of millions of dollars get invested through both revenue sharing payments and, uh, and just general economic development, uh, nation investments into the region, like some of the ones that, you know, we've already talked about this yeah, morning. Yeah. So that, that is a, a, a real welcome change, and I think the region has seen that and, uh, and hope that we can keep building on it. Comment on the, uh, if you could, on, uh, on Madison County. Uh, Madison County. Uh, Madison County, when they, they, they basically challenged the, uh, the number and the, and the deal that was put together. Um, you have a comment on that at all? No, I mean, that was between the state and, and Madison County. So you know, we really, yeah. you know, I think the one thing we've said over and over is that what the settlement showed is that when people come to the table and we negotiate in good faith, uh, that we can deliver real results. And that's what the settlement, if anything, created a model for. Uh, so we think that model works, and moving forward, that should be the model that we use for all of these you know, yeah. existing issues. Uh, finally, I want to ask you about the uh, – actually, my wife asked me to ask you about this uh, – <laughs> the, uh, the outlet mall issue. Uh, I know that seemed to be moving forward and has stalled. What's, what's the reason for that? Well, you know, the the commercial uh, market when it relates to retail is, is evolving, changing quickly uh, with the likes of Amazon and others. So, you know, we, we are still very much committed to moving forward with a retail project. Uh, you know, how that looks, we have to... We've been in the process of sort of rethinking, yeah. and we, you know, we're still working with partners in terms of uh, bringing in potential and, and meeting with potential retail partners. Uh, but at the moment, we've really focused on some new and I think very exciting types of investments, whether it be uh, the Casino, as, you dis- as we earlier discussed, we have a Point Place Casino in Madison County that we've already broken ground on and will be open in the spring of 18. I think that will be an exciting addition to the region. Uh, last In the last couple of weeks, we announced the Maple Leaf Market. It's a new chain of uh, uh, convenience stores that mm-hmm. we will be rolling out throughout the region. And it's, uh, uh, we'll have grab-and-go meals, and it's really uh, what we're calling it's a food first and then a uh, convenience store type model, which we're very excited about. And I think that it gets to what where we started this conversation is that, you know, with the nation, its track record has always been that you cannot just settle and think that if you're not reinventing, if you're not reinvigorating, uh, that that results will continue to be the same. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's really where a lot of our focus has been and, and will be moving forward. I got to tell you, you, you do have to wonder, driving by the Kmart uh, Plaza in, uh, in New Hartford, as of course it's, uh, it's all closed up, and you think of other places that haven't been, these big real t- retail locations that haven't been filled, you do wonder where are we going in retail, um, especially with the world of Amazon and even uh, places like Walmart that are, that are competing online more than ever before. You, you got to wonder where it's all going. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Joel Barkin, uh, we appreciate your time. Give us an update. Uh, and, of course, it's going to be very interesting to see how this progresses downtown. The models are out now to see what it would look like 
um, with this uh, influx of an entertainment sports district and, and, as you said, $50 million being invested by the Unitas, if that were to happen. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate, Appreciate your time. It.